Okay, the last one I want to talk about today is if I want to prove that there exists something that has a particular uh, predicate, then how would I go about doing that? Um, there's two ways to actually find an element that has a property. Uh, the first technique is actually just to simply find the C such that P of C is true. If you find it, normally what we call this particular thing is the witness. So we'd like to find the witness that actually verifies that the proposition that we're talking about is true. A lot of times this is just simply done by brute force. An example of things like this would be there's two integers that are one apart and one is a cube and one a square. And we'd look through that and say, are there two integers that are only one apart, that one is a cube and one is a square? And you'd think, well, this might be kind of odd or impossible. And so the proof of this would be just simply, okay, let's take the squares. You know, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, etc. Let's take the cubes, which is 1, and then 8, and then 27, and then 64, etc. And then we would just go through this process, and you would say, well, wait a second. Um, hey, two integers that are one apart, one's a cube, one's a square. Hey, there's this cube, uh, there's a square, they're one apart, and the yes the answer is yes, two cubed equals eight, and three squared is equal to nine, so this is obviously true. I found my, I found my pair, I found the witness. And so that's, that's the first technique that we have for problems like this. You have to just go through a process and just, you know, something has this feature. Am I going to write down all the numbers? Am I going to do a bunch of algebra? I'm going to work through it in a brute force method until I find such a thing. That's normally how you find witnesses, is to go through it, either stumble upon it uh, to guess it dynamically, or just, you know, fall asleep, wake up in the middle of the night, Eureka, I found it you found your witness. Uh, the other approach, this particular technique, when you do this, uh, this is called a constructive proof, right? Because we really construct the witness is what you're trying to do. And so, on the other hand, what about non-constructive? The idea behind a non-constructive is, well, to be non-constructive means that you have to show that this is true, but you can't find C a witness. <laughs> so you can't actually, it's kind of an interesting question when you have that. And so really there's essentially two ways to do that. Uh, if you would use contradiction, That would mean that if you want there exists an x, p of x, to be true, we would rather simply show that is not the case that there exists an x, p of x, is always false, right? We would rather do that. And maybe this would work. And what you're saying is, is that you would go through it and say, it's never true that it can't exist at all, whether or not I can find it. It's impossible for it not to exist. So. You might not find the witness, but you would show the impossibility of the non-existence, right? That it's impossible for there not to be a witness. Maybe you can show that. Uh, another approach would be to say, um, let's say that we had two things. So we have two people of interest that could possibly be my witness, and I know that, that they're different from each other. And some I'm able to show that the exclusive or between the two is true, right? But I don't know what the truth values are of either of these, right? I don't know. I actually don't know if this is true specifically, and I do not know if this is true specifically. But I do know 
that their exclusive or is true. But if the exclusive or is true, that tells me that one of them is, I just don't know which. But in the end, that's enough, right? It's going to be C1 or C2. If it is C1, it's not C2. If it's C2, it's not C1. But who is it? It doesn't matter. <laughs> if it, it'd be like you're searching for a murderer and it's down between two people. You can at least say there exists a murderer. Well, which is it? I, I'm just saying there exists one. I don't know who it is. And so uh, in the next lecture, we're going to go ahead and fill this out and do some non-constructive proofs to kind of get through this idea of uh, working through. Because constructive proofs, you have to really find it. And non-constructive, it's a little more interesting and it's, it's subtle in a way. So that's it for this time. Uh, for attendance, uh, the only thing that I want for attendance is just to simply, you're going to say yes or no in terms of just to watch these lectures, just like the normal time. And hopefully people are keep keeping up and you are actually watching and getting ready and not waiting to the end because you have to be doing a lot of this mathematics. All right, and that's it.